Hello everyone, good evening. It is currently 1227 midnight and well I have a test. I have three tests next week. One of them is in the microbiology class so let's review some notes because I'm not tired yet and don't want to waste any time. All right so this is going to be product recovery as well as purification. Okay, so product recovery, we have two objectives. We want to purify and we want to concentrate our product once we've um, made it in the bacteria. Each step in the um, recovery will change both of these parameters. So every time you do um, a step to concentrate, it will also purify, it will also change the purification. And of course, you're going to change the concentration when you're trying to optimize it. However, the ideal recovery process will optimize both, will make both of these parameters, the purification and the concentration, happy. Okay, and then again, fermentation and recovery are integral processes. Fermentation actually leads to recovery. Okay, so we have two um, methods here. We have flocculation, which is the um, addition of inorganic salts, so things like NaCl, just, you know, allergen salts. You could also ha add these organic polyelectrolytes into the system, and you could also add these mineral hydrocolloids. Now, the purpose of adding the salts or the polyelectrolyte or the hydrocolloid when you're doing flocculation, the purpose is to make these aggregates that will bind to the cells and they'll drop out of the solution. Again, you're trying to separate cell from the product. Flotation, however, is the reverse of this flocculation. You're going to add gas and this gas will be absorbed by the cells and um, they will rise to the foam layer at the top of whatever vessel you they're using for the process and then you could collect them. This is not a permanent contamination with flotation. And again, flotation is the reverse of flocculation. All right, so let's talk about the principles of filtration that the professor went over. Filtration is the separation of biomass from the culture. You could use a depth filter, which is going to be coarse. So coarse to fine. This is going to be our depth filter. So we're going to have, again, coarse to fine for fungi. Um, it's going to be made out of these filamentous matrix, not neo in the matrix, but a matrix of glass wool, cotton, or asbestos. This thing is dangerous. Don't breathe in asbestos. It's not good. Um, the pores are going to be larger um, than the particles being filtered, but are removed by the torturous path. So again, we have that torturous path in there. It's like a maze. The pores are going to be larger than the particles being filtered. And then we also have the absolute filter, which is going to be um, where the pores are actually smaller than the particles being filtered. So absolute, the pores are smaller than the particles. Depth filter, we have this coarse to fine where we're going to have pores that are larger than the particles. However, there's a, a maze, kind of a maze that has to go through and will help filter whatever in the solution you need. Okay, we also have static and cross-flow filtration. Static will be um, dead-end filtration. You just have like this weird looking cup thing. You have the feed coming in and you have a filter cake. Now, I remember in organic chemistry, that was really difficult, you know, keeping the filter cake clean, not making sure you're you're um, tearing it when you're removing it or adjusting it, all that stuff. You need to make a vacuum seal. Um, that's going to be the static filtration, also known as dead in. Depends on the pore size and the volume because um, it depends on the pore size and the size of the particles. It might lead to clogging. Again, that was the problem that we had in organic chem when I took it at the community college. Cross flow filtration, however, the um, liquid is pumped tangently to the membrane. So what do I mean by that? So we have this membrane here, I'm gonna label it M, 
and the feed is going to go this way as the feed. You're going to have the large particles up here, however, the small ones that you want, the permeate, it, they're going to go through that membrane. This is the feed again. The feed is going across the membrane. The liquid again is pumped tangentially. The filtrate or the permeate, so this is the permeate. Permeate passes through. The particles are removed within the retentate. So these bigger particles, those, those are the goal of this um, cross flow filtration. This is the retentate. And they're gonna be, um, they're not gonna be blocked. Oh wait, shoot, I have that switched around. Look at that, I might need to go to sleep. So the permeate is actually what we need. I'm sorry about that. Don't listen to the person from two minutes ago, he got it wrong. So the retentate is the thing that you want out. This is the retentate. You don't want that, you want the permeate. Oh, wait, do I have it backwards again? No, I have it backwards twice, sorry. You want the stuff on the filter cake, so you want the um, retentate. Sorry about that, because you're retaining it. My bad, just go with context clues. I'm sorry, this whole session here is a mess. The retentate's in the filter cake, and the retentate's also going to be just going through. You don't want the retentate to block the filter in the cross flow. Sorry about that, this was a complete mess. I'm so sorry. Let's look at centrifugation. This is when the particles are going to be removed by increasing the gravitational force. You're going to be using gravity. With centrifugation, you're going to be using Stokes' law. Another equation here. Okay, let's rewrite it. Vg equals d squared in parentheses p, p minus p, l. And that's going to be over 18u times g. The g there is the gravitational constant. Vg out in front of the equation is the terminal settling velocity. d is going to be the particle diameter. Remember, it's d squared, so that's going to be the particle diameter. p, little p, is going to be particle density. p, l, so remember, it's in parentheses, p, little p, minus p, L, close parentheses, that's multiplied by d squared over 18u times g. That PL is going to be liquid density, and then P little p is particle density. You're taking the particle density minus the liquid density, and that's in parentheses. U is going to be the liquid viscosity, and then G is gravitational constant. We've talked about that. All right, so larger and denser particles are going to settle quicker. That's common sense. Liquids that are less dense and less viscous also increase the settling. Just again, water versus honey. Water is less viscous than honey. You're gonna settle more in um, water in a much rapid rate than in honey. Okay, that's another equation that we're gonna have to remember. Oh no, oh, don't worry, we got this, I think. I'm running low on sleep, honestly, but we're gonna get through it. All right, centrifuge, two designs. We have decanters, which are horizontal bowls with low G-force. Large particles are going to be used here. You need the separation of larger particles greater than um, 5 micro something. It's that mu, whatever that. Greater than 5 mu's. You could have lots of solids in decanters, and you're separating them using centripetal force. Not centrifugal force, that doesn't actually exist. Centripetal does. No. Okay, disc bowl centrifuge is on a separator. So you're going to remove the microbes on or the protein particles from liquids. There are short distances because the, it contains several disc plates, which collect the... Um, deposited particles and then these deposits will slide into the solids holding area so you kind of have a way of sorting them in a sorting bin with the disc bowl. That's again um, designed for removing microbes or proteins from liquids. However, decanter, this is for your solids. Let's talk about disintegration. Whoa, sounds powerful. 
So the disintegration of microbes, so if the product is intracellular or inside the cell, they'll need to be fragmented by physical, chemical, and biological means. Um, you're going to, again, find it's easy to break the um, gram negative and the fungi. Those are easy to deal with. However, gram positive and yeast are more difficult. You need to be careful because you don't want to denature your product. Most of these are protein products. You don't want to denature the protein that you're trying to, you know, sell or look at or study. Um, you need to add an inhibitor and you need to keep it cold because remember most proteins at the high temperatures, they don't like that after a, a point. After the optimum temperature, you just go, it just, it's like a bull in a china shop, let me tell you. Okay, disintegration methods. We have the ball mill, which is going to be the common method. You have glass beads that are mixed with the slurry of cells. It's more like a paste. So you're gonna have beads with the paste of cells and you're just gonna shake it like crazy. You're gonna be like Animal from Muppets with how he's drumming. And so remember that wrist motion. He's gonna be shaking it a lot with the ball mill method. You get 80% breakage from the impact of the beads hitting the cells. You could also use a homogenizer, which is going to use the paste of cells, and you're gonna be placing them under high pressure at 500 atmospheres. The liquid will exit, and the forces will cause the, the cells to break. This is 10 to 60% breakage, so I think this ball mill might have a higher breakage at 80. All right, let's talk about purification. One method is gel filtration, where you separate on size. You separate the molecules by their size. Large molecules um, do not penetrate the gel, and therefore they pass directly through. They're easy going. They go right through. Small molecules will penetrate deeply into the gel. They're going to stick themselves into the gel, and so their passage will be slower because they're sticking themselves inside there, so it's going to be slower. So you could kind of plot it, and then, oh, this is going to be the larger particles because they're coming out first. And then, there you go, finishing last will be the ones that are being um, inserted, smaller particles in the, in the gel. You could also use ion exchange, where you're going to be playing around with the ionic groups, the macromolecules with ionic groups. You're going to be playing around with their property there. Um, you're going to be loading or absorbing the macromolecule onto a carrier and it will be eluted by a defined ionic solution. So usually you're going to be using a sodium chloride solution for this and then you're going to increase the ionic strength and then this will cause your uh, macromolecule of choice that you're trying to study with these ionic groups that's going to cause its dissociation. Affinity chromatography. Okay, so this one here will be for biological materials. The desired material will bind specifically and um, reversibly to a ligand on on the um, carrier. That's It's been fixed on that inert carrier. So basically, this is what's used in the bacitration. The bacitration antibiotic is used as this ligand to um, to um, let's, to isolate the metalloprotease by using the affinity chromatography. Another method, we have a ton of these methods, don't we? Um, solvent extraction, this is the two-phase system that is using a, sol a solvent that's immiscible, I don't know how to say that, with the aqueous fermentation broth. So you're going to be using something like the um, Podbleniac separator or pod? I don't know how. Okay, once the product is concentrated in the solvent, so you're gonna basically use um, another liquid to kind of like hold on to your product and then you're gonna purify it further. Um, antibiotics, um, you're gonna see this a lot in their, in that realm when their production. Um, amyl acetate, amyl acetate is used to extract the penicillin. So that's going to be like the penicillin is in the amyl acetate and then you're going to pull it out. They're going to like be together. You're going to pull it out and then you purify it afterwards when you concentrate it. 
um, you can't use it for enzymes, though. You can't use solvent extraction for enzymes that need to be in the active state. So two-phase aqueous systems can be used. You use a salt solution and hydrophilic polymers. All right, let's look at purification and crystallization techniques. Hey, I remember some of these from organic chem, too. Um, so I realized in class when we went over them. Okay, so drying, you prevent the loss of activity. That's why you dry the product. The drying involves the heat transfer from wet, so heat to wet, and then removal of moisture via gas. So you have a few types. You have vacuum tray, rotary cone, that's high agitation, a paddle dryer, or a tumble dryer, which has good homogeneity. Um, the paddle dryer has medium agitation. Those are just types. So there's like multiple types, vacuum, rotary, paddle, tumble, and drying. You don't want to lose the activity, and it's heat transfer from wet, and then you remove that moisture via gas. Yield, okay, let's talk about yield and recovery losses while we still have time here. Okay, so the recovery losses are the percent loss of product during recovery. I remember doing this in organic chem too. You need to be very precise in the crystallization when you're doing this. Um, they are affected by the efficiency of the process, the sensitivity to the steps. The substrate is very sensitive to the process steps. You might lose some. Um, and the number of the purification steps. If it's too complicated, again, you risk losing some of that product. Purification costs as a percent of total costs. So the average cost of recovery is 20%. It could be as high as 90% for intracellular metabolites because you need a more complicated process. And again, getting that intracellular product. Um, so single cell protein in comparison to those intracellular uh, products, single cell protein um, will be only 5% versus 90% for those intracellular metabolites. Um, the antibodies, or no, that's, no. Antibiotics, sorry about that, wrong AB there. Antibiotics are gonna be around 50%. And I think that's the end of the slide, look at that. And we didn't fall asleep during this. All right, that's great. Sorry about that mix up here. Um, the retainant, the retentate, that's the thing you want to keep the permeate goes through. Filter. Okay, sorry about that mix up too. And then there's also the VG equals D squared times in parentheses PP minus PL over 18U times G. That's the Stokes law for um, centrifugation. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do something nice or something. I'm going to go to bed, I guess. All right. Take care, everyone. Please do something nice or someone, and good night.